Hello guys and welcome to Robert Productions. Today we're doing the long anticipated waited Lego Room Tour B. So if you enjoyed the video, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe. It really helps me out here. So without further ado, we're going to get into the tour. But first of all, I'm doing this tour because I will be moving out of here soon in the spring. So slowly I'm going to start moving things over to Lego facility A and yeah. That way, I can go and have to deal with a massive move like last time when I first started my channel. And that was in vlog one. If you want to check that out, linked in the info card above. I had a horrible move. It was so hard to do. So to make it easier, I'm doing a few things at a time. So this week, I'm going to be taking over Port Aaron's X Spring, Calvin Shell, and an ATTE Walker. And those were our all for stop motions coming soon. By those names, you might be able to guess what I'm doing. But yeah. So. Let's get into the room tour. Looking at the closet on the right side, we have a lot of things. So we're going to start off at the middle here and then go down and then back up again. So first off here we have crates. Now this is a mock that I've been working on for a while. It's not that much money in parts, but a lot of money in sets. And I wrote even crate right here to even show that it's not that great, but it's not finished yet because I need more work breaks and yeah. Anyways, some nice things about this mock is the ATM6 and then I got the amazing Kylo Ren show up there. I wanted to make that for the room tour, so that's why I built it recently. Just yesterday, same thing with the Avengers Combine, I also finished that too. So, we have two ATATs, one of the motorized ones, and an ATM6. Sorry I called this one an ATAT earlier. And then we have a great brown bell here. It just looks so good. And I love these trenches I did. You see how the little detailing and those red stones. And there's even some red stone detailing behind this Rebel Trooper. Kind of hard to tell, but... There it is down there as well. And yeah, but this thing, the really cool thing, this door used to be able to open, but after the destruction of it, you'll see that in the vlog. I'll try to link that in the info card above. That it fell down and it was destroyed and I don't have the gears working out right now. So this door could move up and down at one point. Wasn't working the best, but it could at one point. Now some of the pieces are used on the UCS Vander Star Destroyer, which is right over there. Quite an amazing thing I've been working on. I'll get to that in a little bit though. So moving back over here, we're going to Kashyyyk. Now this mock isn't really anything. I had a ship here, it was like, supposed to be like a little bit of a command center base, but it's not really anything. It's just a little way for me to display Kashyyyk. I had the droid gunship there, some amazing Kashyyyk troopers, which are amazing with some Wookiees, a few Chewbacca's right there. And yeah, I have a lot more Wookiees than they were a, so I can't wait to add that to this. There are a lot of sets for Chewbacca of them there. I have at least five more Wookiees, so that'll look great one day once I bring that over there. So, yeah. Moving down here, we have my one of two Avengers shelves of all the Avengers stuff I have. So this is kind of like a mash of Infinity War slash Endgame slash whatever I want it to be. Okay, so over here we have the Avengers compo. A nice set, but it's kind of overpriced. I got it for $80 on sale, which was kind of nice. But yeah, and then we have the Guardian ship, the Avengers Quinjet, and these just represent it to make it look like it's flying. It doesn't look that good, but pick up your cups are very useful for those things. I have a few right here. Over here, we have the Avengers Tower promotion, which is a nice thing. Two Hulkbusters, one there, one there. And yeah, then you got the whole Avengers game in there, in what you call it, Quantum Mom suits. And we will soon, hopefully, be getting the Iron Man Hall of Armor. I'm going to try to fit in there somehow. I don't know how I'm going to move this maybe a little forward, but I always make things fit because that's me. I just cram everything in and it looks great every time. Then we got some outriders over here with big boy Thanos right there. And we got two Thanos, which is kind of weird, but yeah, and I know this is Wakandan, but I just thought it would be cool to include on this side since there's so much stuff over here. Moving on over here, we have Baze Malibus. I didn't really want him, but hey, if I can find him for $2, I'm going to buy him. So that's why I did and I bought him. Over here we have Poe Dameron's X-Wing. Moving down here, we have a kind of a messy shelf with some Minecraft books that I don't really play with anymore and uh, character encyclopedia. Then moving over here, we have more books and just some part bins and a bunch of junk. But anyway, sorry that's a little messy, but that's how it is. But after that, don't read it. It's not that great. I like it. Read Ahsoka. That's a good book. Next up we have pre -visitless. Mandalorian Gauntlet Starfighter. Now, I love this set, it's great, and I will be using it in Season 7, Episode 9 of Clone Wars 10, and Episode 10 as well. It has Obi-Wan Kenobi over there, and then it has Pre-Vizsla, and the Mandal 
DeLorean that came with it. Now those are figures are on Lego Facility A because I'm currently filming Obi-Wan versus Pre Vizsla. So yeah. Then moving over here we just have some more part bins of spare parts and board games, a bunch of other stuff, a Brookmania kit. The one I do own that cost fifty dollars, and I opened it up, plays it, but there's the box for it because it was so expensive, and some more toys and stuff when I was a little kid. Then over here we have the amazing Apollo show, which used to be by the window, but it is way bright in here because it is in a condo in the city, and it got some sun damage. So now I just keep it in this closet and try to preserve what's left of it. It still is a great sit though and looks good from some angles, but there is some slight sun damage on it. So looking at this top section over here. We have some nice sets. Now, none of these are sealed except for this one. Yeah, this one is sealed for investment. And then I got another investment in here in the Lego box, which is pretty nice. And Kylo and Shaw box, Avengers box, and Porsche box. Now, you're probably curious, Will, why don't you keep all your boxes? Well, I was going to, but, but my dad did throw a lot of my boxes when I was younger. And I recently only told him that how much I care about boxes, even though I've had before. But now he understands it more for some reason. I'm not 100% sure why, but hey, it works out for me because I'm glad to keep some of my boxes. So, yeah. But I'm starting to regrow my box collection at Lego Facility B. But Lego Facility A, I do have all of my boxes, which is nice to have. Over there, I just got the Adventures Tower box just staying there because to fill space a little bit. Some Monopoly board games, two drones, and then the UCS Tide Fire, which is quite a nice set, you know, in fact, I like it a lot. And then we have the Malevolence, with the size of just right here and some Earl Legos. So let's move on to the closet on the right. left. Right here, we just have some more bins of parts right here. Some snowshoes, a Star Wars Cars vs. Humanity, which I've never used. And my dad thought it was a game for like Star Wars knowledge and tests, but no, it was Cars vs. Humanity and it's not that fun, but it can be with friends sometimes. I haven't really played it ever, but yeah. Over here we have some Star Wars instruction manuals that are in order. Wait, are they? No, they are not in order. Sorry. I'm still organizing those as I just started doing that this morning. And it's way fun to do. Then we have a safe, which has some money, but not that much right now. And yeah. Then we got some more Lego boxes for investments and all that stuff. Moving down here, we have the Battle of Naboo. Now there's not much here, but... There's some Gungans, some battle droids, and yeah. But I just thought it would be a nice little way to display this battle. And then I have the Jedi rescuing the guards. And I would have Darth Maul right here, but sadly, both of those Darth Maul figures are Lego Study A. So, yeah. Let's continue on to the next shelf below. There's the Jedi Starfighters and Sith so Elephant Trader. These are just a few ships I have. Most of these can actually fit on my custom banner in the back, which we will be showing you in a few minutes. But most of these ships can fit there, in matter of fact. And it's quite nice to have. I do like them a lot. We have Obi-Wan's Interceptor. Can't remember the name of this. I forgot, sadly. Then we have Anakin's. Uh, no, I can't remember his name either. The guy who's, I don't know why, I can't remember him. Sensei 10, I think his name was. But yeah, then we have a Vulture Droid and this stuff of a trailer. Moving down here, we do keep most of my legal investments nice in here so they don't get sun damage. But sadly, this Funko Pop did get some sun damage, which is a little unfortunate, but yeah. We also have this Black Widow on her little bike from the Captain America Civil War sets. And yeah, we have the Leap Trainer Guard Battle Pack, Han Solo Landspear, two Studio Maya Breakouts, this, and three Bane Space Rock Packs. And then we have a little Easter Bunny house, which is not sealed, it's just I have it there. So let's move into the room itself. Sorry, we're not quite in the room yet, but we do have a few things that I want you to look at. I recently just organized all of these in order for my themes of the instruction manuals, which is nice. We got some Nerf guns and stuff behind there. More Nerf guns, play football stuff, bunch of stuff when I was younger. And in here, I do not own any Eagles shoes, but there are some instruction manuals from different themes that I do have. And then bullets and ammunition. Then we're here, we have this nice bungee chair, which is currently folded up because I don't have a desk in here right now. And we do have a Microsoft bag, which is a nice bag. So, for real guys, let's head into the room, and we'll start with the vendor next. Now, looking at the vendor, this is amazing. I love this vendor. I made it since I was low, and I recently started to redesign it this summer. And I, after the move, of course, which was horrible because I recently just moved this massive thing. But now I recently redesigned it, and here we go. It's still under construction. A lot of work to do on it. Probably gotta put another $300 in parts into this before it's actually complete. But 
there is my custom there. So, there is five feet long. Once completed, it will be five feet, five inches with the massive engines coming out the back here. And the cool thing about this is I can actually store a Republic Medical Frigate in the back here, here and an ATTE. Well, when the airship is not in here. And I think it could fit Republic Gunship. I'm not sure I'm putting it in there for a while and I can't remember, but I don't think I can. Then moving to the lower hangar, we have the TX-130 tank and a nice place for vehicles to be like the Falfurst Battle Pack Spears. And since I cannot really fit the Falfurst HRTs on this massive five foot long banner, we have a shelf for all the Falfurst Battle Packs I will be getting. So I'm thinking of putting a bunch of Battle Force troops on a great base plate right here. And then we are going to be having the ATRTs in the back and the speeders on the Star Destroyer. And there's not enough room for all the speeders on the Star Destroyer. We'll put some speeders down here, of course, as well. But I'm thinking of having two rows of Battle Force Battle Packs. Well, Battle Force uh, ATRTs down here. And we have two so far. So that's great. Moving over here, we have this nice little display here. Sadly, there's no tracks there right now. I just don't have it out. There is some track in that bin up there, right behind me. But looking over here, we have some really nice things. We have this nice train. I really like it a lot. It's amazing. And it's one of my favorite trains that I do own to this day. But looking at the train shelf over here, we have some nice trains like the Maersk. And we have some cargo crates. And then we have this cargo passenger train. This was the first train I ever got. And I love it to this day. It's amazing for that feature. And we have some cargo trucks, the Merc one, and then one that came with this train. Then, moving down here, we do have, in fact, a nice ship display. It's kind of powered on, but these are all my ships and Coast Guard, Coast Dock stuff that I've gotten from gifts from family, friends, and all this stuff. And then we have a bunch of wires here because I'm working on a quite a big train layout, as you guys can see. And this is where the control panel is going to be. We are currently building that right now, and we'll be up probably after this video is done. But let's move on to the planes. So looking at my plane collection over here, we do have a few planes. We have this old cargo transport, but the stickers are starting to deteriorate, which is a little sad, but it's okay. And then we have this jet plane and another jet, army jet, that's greater. But yet I don't get why they're discontinuing that other jet because that's available right now for Technic. And they're discontinuing it because it goes against laws of planes. But this is legit a jet from the US military. Maybe because of air shows they allow it, but yeah. Then behind your I don't know if you can really see it, but we do have a yellow crater helicopter and some army guys right here from Brigamania, which are quite expensive figures, but yeah, we only have four of those or five. I can't remember exactly, but yeah. And we also have Texas America right there. I don't know where his mighty shield is though. Moving down here, we have the UCS Falcon. And yes, I have recently just ordered replacement parts so I can fix this section right here. I do have a good majority of it built. It's just a hundred pieces for detailing and pieces that I need to attach this that are priority to make this Falcon work. I also need it on that side as well. So it was a hundred pieces. I got it from Brickshire Pieces. It cost $14 and it's coming in the mail in the next 10 business days, they say. But I do not believe that. Moving over here, we have my Lego Batman collection, well, Bat vehicles. And right here was a little Bat cape, which I've never shown you any of you before. But behind there is like a few base plates and was my custom Bat cape I made when I was a little kid. I had a lot of green bricks. I don't know how I had that many, but I did. So yeah. Then we have some Batmans up there with the Bat boat, Bat helicopter, the Bat plane, and the lovely Batmobile. Moving on here, we have some other DC stuff for all you DC lovers. We have a nice Arkham Asylum, the Joker Funhouse, and the Joker Two-Face car, bunch of bad guys, Mr. Freeze, the bank, and then I said Arkham Asylum already. So yeah, I do like a lot of stuff. Now this is Marvel right here, but I just thought it looked good with everything that was going around that area. And it doesn't really match with all my other Marvel stuff. So let's move on to the throne room collection. Over here, we have some pretty nice throne rooms. We have Chancellor Palpatine's throne room. Over here, where R66 happens with some nice sand commandos that I got in the sand commando battle pack. And we have the Death Star Final Duel, which is quite a nice set. I do love it a lot. It is amazing. Then over here, we have Darth Vader's Transformation Chamber. I got this at the Lego store for full price of $30. I do regret that though, because I remember at one point you could get it for $7 on Amazon. It's a little unfortunate, but it's okay. 
Then moving over here, we have my police collection from as a little kid. And yeah, I love it still to this day. I love this boat. It's a nice boat. A little dusty, but I got to dust that off. Some helicopters from the forest collection, which is something I really wish I could have gotten more of, but I just didn't have the money at the time, and I was kind of getting into Lego. But I love the forest collection. I hopefully one day, once they get that police station from the forest from 2012, I love it, Seth. Then we have two police stations. One for my grandma, who didn't know I had a police station already. So now this is like a big, massive police area central. And one day when I make a massive little city, it'll be really cool to have that. Then we have a little brick bank over here with some bad sticker work done by six or seven year old me. How old I was at the time, I don't remember, but I had to be that young because this sticker work is really bad that I did out here. And sadly, some of the stickers are starting to break already as it is. So let's move on to the Bell Genosis. Now, this boy really isn't a Bell Genosis, but I thought. It worked for this section because it's tan and so is Genosis. But Genosis is more like orange, just dark orange. But today when it breaks, I just leave it like this. And I have the HTE right here. Now, I would usually have the gunship right behind it on a pick cup, which is over there. But the gunship has been moved to Lego Sodi A for obvious reasons that you all know of, which is the final episode of The Clone Wars. And then we have a nice little bug right here, even though it didn't take place during this battle. And the behold, Pong Crow. Very nice and expensive figure. Moving up here, we have another palm crawl again, and we have two Z95 Headhunters. Now these Z95 Headhunters are some of my favorite sets, and I'm so glad I got them for those Final First Troopers. That's great, I love that I got these a long time ago. I remember I got one for my grandpa and one for my dad. Then over here, we have the exclusive Harry Potter Hogwarts exclusive that came out a long time ago. Now this is the only Hogwarts like a little buildable thing that we could actually get from Lego. So it goes for a lot of money sealed in box, but I like it. You know, I don't collect that much Harry Potter. All I have is the train and the f few Fantastic Beasts minifigures and sets and the few CMFs, but I just thought it was nice to have. But there's a rumored Diagon Alley coming out soon, and I think it'd be nice to maybe get that. I'm not sure though. Moving over here, we have a few pirate sets from my pirate phase in my life. I got this pirate set trying to remember what it was called, but it was a nice little fortress. And this Skull Island thing, which was also pretty cool. The skull clicked up and revealed some treasure behind it. Then we have some builds from when I was little, like three or four or something. I have this nice truck that I made, another kind of destroyed truck, and a vehicle of some sorts. Then we have this bridge that is kind of broken. I would like to restore it one day, but I was trying to make the London Bridge in the micro scale because I really wanted that London Bridge that was available at that time, and I don't think it's sadly now available today. But that was a wonderful set and I loved it back in the day. So let's head to behind this table. For Marvel Shelf, I did say I have two earlier in the video, if you do remember that. And we have Doctor Strange, Iron Man, Hulkbuster, Korg, and Prox no, not Proxima, but um, Squidward. Let's just call him Squidward because that's what Iron Man calls him, Mr. Tony Stark. So, or it's actually his name is Ebony Ma. I would never forget you, I'm, I mean, uh, I'm too much of a Marvel fan to forget that. Moving on here, we do have some Speed Champion stuff, and yeah, I didn't really want this truck from Mayor, but my grandma did get it for me, so it's kind of nice to have. It looks nice with the Speed Champion stuff, but I will be making a custom, what you call it, a custom driver for head, whatever you call those things in the future. Then we have some motorcycles from the motorcycle set that I also got as a gift, and this whole Speed Champion thing, which I also got as a gift. The main thing I wanted from this collection though was this Porsche because it is amazing. I asked for this and I love this set. To this day, it's great. I totally recommend you get it while it's still available. It's only $14. Looking over here, we have my Jabba, the Hut shelf. We have Han Solo and this Desert Skip from 2017, not the 2012 one because I did not get it back then. We have the 2013 Jabba Steel March, very nice set. And we do have the Rancor Cage right here. Now you do know why the Raincore Cage is a controversial set. Please let me know. I never really understood the story behind it. And I've been kind of lazy and I haven't looked it up yet. But I want to know more about this set. And I want to know why it's so controversial and they discontinued it early. So, I also do have the Raincore Pit right here. But I had to refilm this little section because it is reflective and I didn't want you guys to see my face. So, here's the back end of it, because you can't really see anything. Here, here we have a okay, custom Death Star I made with Lowell. I was trying to make the real Death Star that's over there. And yeah, that was it. And then the Jack 14 ship, which I really don't like. I got it as a gift again, but yeah. It's a nice set, it's average. I like it, but 
not one of my favorite sets that you own and something I'd be happily willing to sell, hopefully, but I'm not going to sell it. Then you have some microfibers right here and the thing that came from the May Dust Dart, which is all the way up there. I, can't, I don't know if you guys can really see that on that shelf all the way up there, but it is up there, right there. Then, moving to the back, we have my UCS Falcon box, which is amazing. And there are those other pieces I told you about that I had almost completed. And a second train anniversary dropship sealed. So I have a total of three of those, as I've said in previous videos before. Then, moving over here, we have these Nerf guns, lightsabers, all that stuff. And moving to this final corner, we have the amazing, wonderful Death Star. It says amazing, and I love it greatly. Now, let's head to this little closet area over here where we have a game, this box for the Stormtrooper helmet, which is a great thing. I have it all the way up there. I love it to this day. And we have the Meepo stores, bots, the robots. I love those things. They're so cool. And we have a little bit of an army collection right here. Not really much of an army collection, but I did have a phase with army stuff. We have my Star Wars logo I made from as a little kid. And I, my Star Wars logo from when I was a little kid. Now I had to make this section a little bit darker because I didn't want you, I didn't want you to see where I live and my condo in the city. So that's it for that. Then we have over here, instead of a bin in my brick separator bin, we have some brick separators right here in this pickle brick cup that will be combining to my entire collection of brick separators which just makes me really happy because I love to have a ton of brick separators. It looks really cool. And I have one more thing to show you on this side of the wall. Over here, we have a few astronaut things, a few promos. This is actually one of my first videos right here. I think it was my first. And there's a review of this poly bag. It was new when I got it. And it's a wonderful poly bag that I got for free from the Lego store. And my train table. This is something I didn't really cover in my first tour of Lego Room B. But I'm going to cover it now. Now this has been my childhood dream to have a massive train layout. And now we're working on it a lot more. And I'm getting it done. But if you'd like to see videos on this, let me know. I'm maybe even thinking about making a separate channel on my journey of making this massive train layout. Or of what's left of it. So I can show everyone on YouTube how to make a great train layout. So yeah, I do have a bunch more trains that are in storage. But just to keep this room a little nice. But I cannot wait to make this operational today, have this motorway turn around. It's going to be really cool. A little tunnel right there. And I'm planning on having a mountain over there soon, one day. So yeah. Then moving over here, we do not have a MacBook because this is my dad's, it's not mine. But we do have a JBL flip speaker. I love this thing. It's great quality. But I do prefer Sony. So if you're going to get a speaker, go for Sony. I think it is way better. Over here, we have my nice lanyard from Star Celebration. And we have this... Lego figure characters from like Amazon promoting it or whatever. But I do hope to bring this to a Lego convention and just have a lanyard when I have a little keychain like saying I'm like I'm an exhibitor. But it'll be really cool and I'm sure I'll get a lot of comments on this lanyard. So if you see me at Lego convention, you know that it's me because I have this lanyard on. And then I have my TK421 Stormtrooper helmet when I did go to Star Celebration a few years ago. And yeah, it's really nice, cost $8 and it has a little voice changer. I love it to this day. So that is probably going to wrap it up for the room tour, guys. Thank you all for watching this amazing room tour. Let me know if you have any questions about the room tour. And maybe you can answer some of my questions in the comments below about some of the stuff that I have. Like the Rancor cage right down there. So thank you all for watching. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more content. And this is probably the last room tour you'll ever see in this room because I'm going to start moving things out slowly a bit at a time. You may see more in December, but I can assure you there will not be as many Legos there. So, peace out guys.